Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dean here, and we are live for our session, Present Your Webinar Like a Pro. Um, we did another session earlier today in the UK, and we had a few glitches, so uh, just bear with us if you have any issues. I know our president of North America, not Joe Biden, Graham Riley, the president of Maverick in North America is in the chat. So if I miss anything in the chat, apologies. There is a glitch on LinkedIn at the moment, which is making this a little bit squiffy. But we're here and I wanna walk you through some things that will help you present your webinar like a pro. Let's be honest, presenting a webinar, standing in front of a camera or even recording it, can actually feel really uncomfortable. So what we're gonna look at is some of the things you can do to come across better, come across more relaxed, and actually uh, feel more comfortable doing this. Um, so we're gonna get started. Um, if you want the replay from today's session, please go ahead and drop us an email to hello at maverick.com. It's on the screen here somewhere you can find the email address to email it. Don't put it in the chat because we can't see your emails in the chat. So drop the email to there and say, can you send me the replay? And we'll absolutely do that uh, for you. I'll also reference some uh, resources we've got in tonight's session. And again, if you want a copy of those, send us an email, hello at maverick.com, and we'll get them to you. Now, I've deliberately done this webinar a little bit different. In that, bear with me, we've got two cameras tonight, so I'm making it more complicated for myself or today. I've got two cameras and a whiteboard, and I want to write some stuff down and do this a little bit more um, uh, live um, because one of the reasons I'm going to do it this way is... Uh, let me just share a little bit of my story so that you understand where I'm coming from. So uh, if you rewind to 2013, so nine years ago, I worked in a television company. So you go, oh, Dean, you worked in the television. You know this thing inside out. No, I was behind the camera. I was a consultant uh, and a, a, a senior uh, executive for a television company behind the camera. I'd be the one going, oh no, we should do more of this or we do more of that. Or this is how we could do this to actually get the result. I didn't step in front of the camera until 2018, five years later. And I was forced to do this. So I, this did not come naturally to me. Some people say you look, sit, look so at ease on camera. I, I don't feel at ease. This is something I've learned simply because I've done it over and over and over and over again. And it's important to understand that your first webinar will feel a little bit like a car crash. I put a post up. Maybe you didn't want to hear that, but I put a post up um, saying your first podcast will be awful. Your first webinar will be awful. Your first blog post will be awful. But you get better as you do it. The first time you put yourself in front of a camera like this, it's not like a Zoom call, by the way, because when you're doing a webinar, you have nobody to look back on, yeah, because you have to focus on what you're doing. Um, now, I'm going to talk about the different types of presenting with a webinar and which ones work and which ones are more difficult. I'm also going to share some strategies that will help you present better. So. Um, the first thing is I want to look at is the different types of webinar you can do because it takes a different level of skill to do those different ones. So I would say that the webinar I'm doing right now, and I don't know whether we, there's no way to technically show you, but I'm staring down the barrel of a camera. I've got a TV screen just there, which is showing me what's on, on screen. And I've got a camera here. So I'm flicking between two things. Now, this is the most complicated way to do it. Well, one of the most complicated ways to do it. But actually, um, there is an element of this that will make your life easier too. And the reason it becomes easier doing it this way 
is sometimes when you're presenting a webinar on Google or on Zoom or on Teams, you have a whole host of admin that comes with it in terms of keeping your audience quiet whilst you're trying to land a point. But also, um, doing a webinar in this way or helps you stay on topic. So the, at the outset, I would think about which is the best presentation medium for you. You won't know until you try, but the danger of you doing it as a group call, uh, which is probably the technique from a technology point, the easiest way to do it, but the presenting skills or the admin skills that have to go with it and the risk that somebody will come off mute and ask a question or you end up in a rabbit hole um, is higher. Um, so one of the things you could do to prep for this is host some group calls and share your slides in a more informal setting to practice. But actually, I encourage people to do it this way simply because you can flow. So I'm going to move back to the other camera because <laughs> we're not ready for the whiteboard yet. So when we're doing our presentation, one of the biggest things you can do, the other thing that it's a mistake you can do, so you've picked your medium, right, is doing this and walking and talking to yourself because you can see yourself on the camera and as a result, you end up presenting to you and you lose eye contact with the, the people. If you're using webinars to present and to sell yourself and to show your expertise and to build your thought leadership and influence with a community, you actually need to stare at them a little bit. <laughs> yes, blink, but you don't want to do this and just talk to this, this here. Talk to yourself. You want to talk to the people who are watching through, the, through their screens. So whichever way you choose to go in terms of medium, whether you're going to do a group, a bit more admin, and so there's a risk you could get blown off topic or get sucked into questions and not go through your process and your slides in an order so you find yourself out of place, or you go straight down the camera. Now, one of the things um, that you may not like um, is actually it's easier to do this live than it is to do it recorded. Why is that the case? Because you would think it would be easier to do this recorded than live. Well, when you record every slip up you make, every time you do something that you go, oh, I shouldn't have said that. And by the way, even to this day, you do that. Um, you will say things, you will put things in, and it just comes out because you're presenting. Whatever you script will always come out differently. So when you're doing it live, you can't beat yourself up. You have to just keep going. Um, and that can be a terrifying experience and it can be nerve wracking. But actually, um, what often people do is they try and record and record and record and record. And it can be helpful. But actually, when it comes to the crunch, uh, a lot of people buckle under the pressure of that and go, it's not right. It's not right. Let's cancel the webinar or they remove all of the humanity out of the presentation because they practiced it so much that it becomes like there's no personality. So when I make a slip up, and I'm sure I'm going to make some, you'll see me have a little joke about it and move on. But yes, I still have those little thoughts as I'm presenting in the back of my mind of, oh, did I get that outright? Did they understand it? That is perfectly natural. So We've got the whole medium thing that you need to work out, which is the best format for you. You've got the whole uh, do it live. Absolutely practice, but practice as if it's live. So you can't stop. You can't go back to the beginning. You have to go all the way through. Um, it will make your life a whole lot easier. So when we now think about the mindset, yeah, and I, I'm not a, a you know a coach or anything like that. I'm just talking from my experience, having presented hundreds of times now in four years, hundreds of times on stages in public in front of an audience, but probably more digitally uh, than that. So um, I've probably done I don't know, I guess four hundred live presentations like this, something like this. So you can see 
or hopefully I come across at ease because I've done this so many times. So uh, I'm also presenting, uh, I wish I could show you, maybe, uh, no, I'm not going to tinker with the cameras. I'd also show you, I'm presenting with one page of notes. Now I'm doing that because I've done this presentation so many times, I know the topics and I know the questions that people ask. So the more times you do a similar talk, the more comfortable you become. It's muscle memory that you'll have to develop. So when you're thinking about your how you approach this from a mentality point of view, you have to almost um, accept that you will make mistakes. It will not go to plan. You might have to reverse course. But once you accept all of those things, you become free to be you in front of the audience. And at the end of the day, for whatever reason you're presenting your webinar, you are trying to make the audience at ease with you. If I don't feel at ease here, they won't feel at ease there. If you don't feel that I'm comfortable talking about what I'm talking about, you'll pick up on it. You'll notice. So it's exactly the same. Um, I remember a few years ago, somebody said to me, um, that they do talks and they can do a talk for about an hour and a half. Now, I've done that. At the biggest talk I've done in one go, and I had a five-minute break between the sessions, was a five-hour presentation. And I did it live with a five-minute break. My voice was killing me afterwards. But I did a five-hour presentation. And one uh, a few years ago, a public speaker came to me and said, the reason you can do a five-hour presentation and you, you, you are comfortable dealing with it and you are comfortable dealing with the questions that come from that, um, so a live question Q&A, is because you've got more hours of knowledge than what you're presenting. So I would think about it from that point of view of look at what you're presenting in your time slot and how much knowledge have you got behind it. Now, when we come to presenting our information, we need to bring it into an order. An order will help us feel more at ease because we know where to go next. I'll tell you now, when you get in front of a camera and you've got either, um, you know, faces looking at you or you've got um, just a barrel lens at you, um, your mind can quickly go blank. So your slides, and this is really important, you do not want your audience looking at the slides, particularly if you're trying to use the webinar to build your own credibility and, and you want to use it as a sales tool. You don't want your audience looking at them. You want your audience listening to you. All of this stuff, the slides, the, the whiteboard, all of that stuff, the lights, all of that stuff is to create a bit of variety so that people go, oh, uh, what's going on in a change of scenery? That's the only reason that you need slides, um, because otherwise you're just looking at one person for a while. So we're going to do a whiteboard session in a minute, and I'm going to map out a, a structure that you can follow for your webinar. And we're going to put that together on the, on the slides. And again, if you want a copy of the structure that I'm going to put on the slides here, on the, on the whiteboard, see? Made a little boo-boo there. Uh, if you want a copy, you can email us and we'll send you an, uh, the, the structure of all of the things that we're going to do. So the structure is there to help you keep a flow. And that will help you keep focused, keep organized, know what you're doing, and not lose sight of it. It'll give you confidence in presenting. So it's really important you have that structure. And then after the structure, we're going to look at how do you compose that as a slide? Because actually what you want, now I'm not going to spoil it. We'll go to that in a minute. So uh, let's build the structure. Let's look at the structure of what you want and what you're going to do in your webinar so it'll help you formulate it. So we'll go to the whiteboard. It's pretty cool doing it with two cameras. Uh, I feel like I'm almost on a proper TV show. It's quite fun. So if we're thinking about our structure, and as you can see, I'm the most brilliant uh, uh, 
whiteboard writer. So uh, we're thinking about our structure. I might use a red pen, actually. Now I feel like Bob Ross or something. So we've got, obviously, the opening intro. Yeah, so the opening intro is getting everybody settled. So you need to do that because pretty much every time your webinar, people will arrive late. Yeah, so you don't want to start bang on time. And, and this is something to think about if you're presenting through Teams or Zoom or Google. If people are arriving late, there will be permissions to get them in and all that kind of stuff. And some people might arrive unmute, unmuted. So there's a whole host of admin. So if you're going to present using like a, a group call, you need to have probably somebody doing the admin of that for you because otherwise you're going to stop. Oh, there's somebody that need to let in. Or uh, can you just mute? It's a whole host of admin that can throw you off. So you do the opening intro literally to buy yourself some time. <laughs> Excuse me. Buy yourself some time so that people come in and get settled. And so when I do it, I go, welcome, thanks for joining us, uh, where, you know, to ask people where they're joining from, uh, do a bit of housekeeping, saying, you know, if, you're, if you can't, um, if you have any questions, put it in the chat. I do all of that kind of housekeeping piece to effectively buy some time. So that intro, opening intro, is that's there what it is. It's also a good way for you to deal with your nerves because you can just get it out of the way without diving into the topic. So the opening intro is critical. Hopefully you can see this on screen. I think you can, yeah. So opening intro is important. Now, the obvious thing to do next is introduce yourself. So we've opened the intro to buy ourselves some time to get everybody in. And that's just a little bit about you. Do not make it your life story. Just tell some pertinent information so they can get a flavor of who you are. At the end of the day, if you're going to use this webinar to create a conversation or a future relationship, they need to buy into you. And so this is a bit of giving them the flavor of who you are and what you're about. So it doesn't need to be very long. And this whole thing here, by the way, these first two stages are literally to help you get over your nerves. Yeah, it brings a structure to get over the nerves, to feel more relaxed and um, get settled before you start diving into the, the meat of the content. So then I would always go for something like an expectation. Yeah, or you might call it an agenda. Now, quick thing for you, um, I have it here, so you can't see this, but I have an agenda right here in front of me as a uh, mental note. So if ever I go, where do I go next? I have like, it's my birthday tomorrow. So uh, if I have an absent moment or an elderly moment, I've got a snapshot in front of me. Don't print every single slide. Because if you do that, you'll end up ruffling papers everywhere because you'll lose where you are. You don't want to build a dependency on your slides in front of you because all it needs is something to go awry and you, you're, you're all over everywhere. So you write an expectation and agenda, have that printed, have it stuck somewhere where you can see it. So just the bullet points of what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Now, I'll show you in a minute. We'll break it down a bit more. You can have the sub bullet points if you want. Uh, but the key is this is your cue. Yeah, this is your cue. So the expectation or agenda is um, in this session, I'm going to show you how you can feel more comfortable and present your webinar like a pro. Yeah, that's my expectation. So that's what we're going to go through. And I also said, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We've got two cameras and I've got a whiteboard session just to give people an, a set, uh, um, an expectation or an understanding of what's going to happen. So real simple, real simple stuff. Now, if you are using this webinar as part of your marketing or as a sales tool, you want to really set and set the scene and whet the appetites because you want people to stay until the end. And so this part of this expectation has to be what's called a big promise. So I'll write this on.
So in my webinars, I try and make the big promise the title of the webinar. So this webinar is called Present Your Webinar Like a Pro. So guess what? The big promise for this is I'm going to help you put together a webinar that will make you more comfortable, more confident, and actually present it in a way that makes it uh, better for you. So this is really important that you have this big promise. Now, you're not going to blast out the answer here. You're going to actually uh, build the answer for them. If you give people the big promise in slide one, there's no reason to stay. So you need to think about, okay, I've got to build this webinar collectively. So what we do is we break our message down into three points. You can do more, but generally three points is good because we are trying to convince a human. We're trying to educate human human beings. So too much information can be, wow, that was a lot of information, but nothing actionable. So what we might do is the first thing we'll do is diagnose. Yeah, so that might be the reason why. So that is explaining some of the challenges that people have presenting webinars. Nerves, uh, technology, all of those different things. So you go over and explain, okay, in this webinar, this is the big promise. So why is that so elusive for people? Why do people feel afraid from doing webinars? So in my diagnose phase, I'm going to talk about there's your personal confidence of never doing this before. There's knowing how to present, which actually a lot of the time comes from experience, and it's building a structure. So a lot of webinars, why do they fail? Yeah. Why do they not come across as a slick presentation or a convincing presentation? Now, I could answer in lots of different ways, but the first answer I'm going to give is actually... Um, Or so I put the first point as product or sales obsession. You'll have an objective as part of your webinar. You may it may be sales, it may be to promote a product, but sometimes that can get the better of you. And what happens is that you're so obsessed with this, you forget to actually give any value content or anything that people can go, that was worth my time. So this is a real danger, and it's a real danger because um, what you could do is inadvertently bring people to a webinar. They think they're coming to learn something and, and have a new understanding, have a light bulb moment, or this could help me, and all they feel like is they've come to an infomercial. So you need to be very careful with this because this is one of the key things. Yeah. My other point, so my point one, my point two, and our point three. So this is my main point. I'm going to diagnose the issues. My main point. So product obsession, sales obsession is the first one. The next one is a dependence on slides. You cannot be dependent on your slides to deliver a presentation. Things go wrong. <laughs> technology goes wrong. I had it this afternoon. The technology went wrong. You're live. You have to get going. And it was, it was a nightmare. If you're dependent on your slides and something goes wrong, your whole webinar falls apart. You have to be prepared to be able to go without them. Yep. So on this one, I've got one. I've actually got two slides. I've got two slides. And I've got my notes which are actually bullet points that I'm showing you here now. So product obsession, sales obsession. In other words, you become so obsessed with selling something that you actually don't deliver any value. Yep. Uh, dependence on slides is another one. And then not engaging the audience. So we have today a glitch. 
but normally we have comments. So some of you are commenting right now and Graham is in the chat talking to you all and answering your questions. Just as an aside, I can see some comments, but not all of them. So apologies if I don't uh, resolve any of your questions at the end. I'll try and do some of them uh, if they show up, but we've got a glitch with the feeds because we're live on LinkedIn and YouTube at the same time, technology. Eh? Um, so what do I mean by this, not engaging the audience? Well, there's the obvious of um, engaging you and interacting with you. So if we were on Zoom, you might come off mute and ask a question or we might have a discussion. That's the first element of it. So on, on, on a YouTube webinar or a LinkedIn Live like this, I'll be asking questions and you'll be commenting in the chat or I'll be saying something and you'll be responding in the chat. Real simple. But that's not what I'm ultimately talking about. What I'm talking about is that the audience is on the edge of their seat. They want to see the big win they're going to get from this webinar. They want that big promise. And so if you want people to stay to the end of your webinar, you have to keep reminding them of the big reason why they should stay to the end. And it's not to hear more about your product and it's not to get a coupon and it's not all of this stuff. Yeah, it is what's in it for them. And you have to reaffirm that all the time. So I have to say to you at regular intervals, by the time you finish this, if, you, if you're watching this right now live, or if you're watching this on the replay, if you start to go through this and realize, actually, I can do this. I'm confident enough to do this. I can see how this can help my business. You, that's what my aim is for you, that you will feel confident. Maybe you've chickened out of some webinars. Maybe you've had some and they've been a bit of a disaster. I'm going to share from my own experience about what's worked. And I'm not a natural presenter. This face was made for radio, you know. Um, that's a, a joke, hopefully. Uh, but some of you will laugh at it. Um, uh, it's just the way it is. You have to get comfortable with it. It's a powerful tool. Webinars are a powerful tool you can leverage to help you grow your business. So it's really important that you overcome some of the, the difficulties here. So I would go product obsession getting obsessed with trying to sell something so you undermine the, the topic. Dependence on the slides. In other words, you're following the slides. Actually, you need to have an outline and be able to follow your outline. And the slides, if they work, great. If they don't, they don't. It's real simple. Not engaging the audience. Real, real. Again, very, very simple. Keeping people engaged. You know, I can remember in 2018, Somebody said to me, do you know how to keep people on the webinar? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm, but most webinars see a massive fall off rate. Like literally you lose probably 70% of your audience. Um, now, on Zoom and things like that, you would think you retain them more, but it isn't. Because it's digital, people just go, nah, Netflix, I don't like it. I'm out. So you have to give them that cliffhanger, that little bit of suspense to say, come on and keep coming and keep staying, keep listening. So engaging the audience around the topic, which is hard, always linked to the big promise, what they're going to get from this webinar. So it's really important you think about what are they going to get and deliver on that. So the first main points I'm going to make is diagnosis. So these are the issues. So the second main point, and I always do sub points. Yeah. So the second main point is now I'm going to start to give some practical strategies. So practical So these might be things like, okay, number one, um, keep your slides, yeah, practical strategies. Don't overload your slides with lots of information. Yeah, don't overload your slides with lots of information. Keep them simple because the simpler they are, the more impactful they are. And the simpler they are, the more they are going to pay attention to you. And if you're using it, using a webinar to demonstrate your expertise, then you're going to need to be able to um, engage that human-to-human -human thing. 
And if they become latched onto your slides, you lose people. Or if you go too heady and don't keep people's keep people's attention, they, they it becomes academic and they're not really emotionally engaged with the webinar and they won't stay. I mean, the reality is a webinar is very much like a TV show. Yeah, it's very much the same. If you're not keeping people interested, they're out of here. They're completely out of here. So simple slides, keep the attention on you. So number two, and I'm going to write a space here, so I'm going to have to clear it in a minute. Um, number two, and this one is all about changing things. Yeah. So um, as you can see, I moved from here to here. And I've moved uh, from here to here, yeah? So if you're with me, watch. I'm just moving around. I'm changing things so that you see it and have a bit of difference. I'm just changing things up. So even whether it's slides, whether it's you presenting, whether it's the tone or anything like that, you need to keep changing things. People, if I just stood here and said, uh, sorry, I've moved, the cameraman's telling me off because I've moved too close. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. I am going to show you five ways you can make more money in your business in 2022. Welcome. Thank you for coming. We're going to start the presentation. You would get, you would fall asleep. You'd fall asleep. It doesn't matter how good that information is. You'd nod off. Yeah. For For my North American friends, I am... Uh, a typical northern British person. So some of my lingo, apologies if you don't get it, nod off, you'll bore people, you'll put them to sleep. So slide two, slide two is change things often. Yeah, because you want to keep people interested and, and draw people's attention to different things. Yeah, I talk a lot with my hands. It can be annoying for me when I see the video replays, but actually it does create a bit of variety. It does change things a little bit. The other thing on this one is, of course, uh, the way and the level that you speak at. So one of the dangers, and I'm going, I'm going into something else. I could add a fourth point here, is when you've practiced your webinar, when you do it for real, you race it. I mean, you literally, <laughs> I could tell you a story. I, I work with some clients and they, they engage me to help them build their webinar, part of our accelerator program, part of our other programs that we do with corporate businesses where they want a webinar to perform. They want to create opportunity off a webinar. And um, one particular client, we help them write their slides. I mean, literally write the slides and what to put on them. And we, we mapped this out that it was a 45 minute presentation and left 15 minutes for questions. And that's a really good length of time. You don't want it too long. You put, you want it to be short, snappy, insightful questions done, get to the follow-up. And uh, we did the presentation in the rehearsals. It was, um, 55 minutes. Rehearsals, 55 minutes. And this is not some novice. This is somebody who's used to doing pr presentations and presenting in front of people often. So they're not afraid of sharing their views, what have you. But what happened was that 55-minute presentation in the first rehearsal, we said, can you just squeeze it down a little bit? And they squeezed it down and it became a 15 minute presentation. It was like, no, 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 you've gone too far here. So it's really important that when you're thinking about this, that you pace the way you communicate. So pace the way you communicate. So three is about tone and pace. So I have a tendency to talk very fast. But sometimes, particularly when I'm excited or enthused about something, I'll go absolutely nuts and, I'll, and people will go, can you just replay that? But the key is that actually you need to slow down in places, change your voice in places, 
hopefully I'm changing my voice, right? And change the, change the pace. So you change the tone because that'll keep people engaged. You can go quieter when you're trying to make a more important point. And you can go more excited when you're really interested in something. And you will feel, I'll be honest with you, when you first do this, you will feel like an idiot doing it in front of a video camera because you'll think, well, I feel like a strange person because I'm just talking to nobody. I'm getting really excited and then slowing down. And so this pace and tone become really important in, in, in engaging people and letting people soak the information up that you're sharing. You don't really want people to just like have head knowledge. You want them to think about it a little bit as they go. So just changing the tone and the pace, you know, being quieter, being a bit louder, um, make, you know, all the different tones you can make <clears throat> is really good. I'll add you another one. And this is a free tip. Always have a glass of water. So tonality and pace become really important to keep people interested. Do not be afraid of silence. Silence helps people think. But when you're in front of a camera or you're presenting, a few seconds feels like an eternity. So um, when you stop talking, yeah, three seconds feels a long time. But when you're, when you're talking, three seconds, you know, I could be talking. I mean, we've been on this session for quite a while now. Uh, we've got to uh, pick up the pace a little bit. But there's two versions. You can race. Um, so sometimes when you've got lots of stuff, you forget to stop and overemphasize or emphasize points. Um, so that's really important. And uh, you also will, you will also uh, not give the breathing space. So we've got some questions here uh, already. So um, apologies if we don't get everybody's questions in. It's just there's a glitch with the comments here. But I know Graham is in the chat and he'll, he'll take a note of all the questions. And if you email us, we'll send this to you along with the recording and again, if, um, if you want some help with this and you want to speak to one of us, you want a little 15-minute coaching session on some of this stuff, let us know. We'll, we'll do it for you free of charge to help you because you'll go and tell other people we were amazing, hopefully, uh, if we help you. So when should I start promoting my webinar? Um, there's lots of ways to answer this, but the simplest way to answer this is, number one, you, uh, the minimum is probably six weeks. Now, I've been doing this for a long time, or four years, so I've picked up an audience, so I know whenever I do a webinar, I can pull 100 people together at short notice. You may not be in that place, so six weeks is a good time to start. Obviously, the longer the better, but you just need to be careful. If you plan something next year and people are signing up now, they really won't remember. So, ideally, six to 12 weeks is a good time to start promoting it before to get the maximum attendance. Another question here, uh, what if only 10 people show up? What if only 10 people show up? That is probably one of the worst feelings ever. Um, actually, I'll tell you a story here because this is funny. When I first did webinars, I did them on Google or uh, Zoom. I, I, we use Google for stuff like that. So we use Google and I had seven people on a webinar and I had a presentation to go through and it just felt really strange. Yeah, I'm here presenting to seven people when I should be having a discussion. I've also, <laughs> I've also been booked as a speaker for an event that was hosted at the Excel in London and there was, the room was sat out for 400 people and there was three people in the room. Um, at times like that, you feel, as a human being, you feel like, what am I doing here? I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this. This was a mistake. And it's like, no, no, the show must go on. Yeah. So, so I will present. If there's 10 people, I'll do it, and I'll give it my everything. And I'm not going to care that there's 10 people. 
I'm going to choose not to care. And I'm going to give the best presentation I can. But there is this little thing in your head that goes, what a joke. This is a waste of time. 10 people, all that effort for 10 people. But I'll give you a scenario. I've done that event with 10 people and four people bought. So that's incredible. So don't underestimate, particularly for sales, don't let your disappointment with the numbers, if you do get 10, you know, plan so that you don't get 10. But if you do get 10, don't, don't do your, um, your B-list presentation. Do your A-list because those four people could be the key customers that you're looking for. So uh, always do your A-game, even when you feel like an idiot doing it. I have done a two-hour session once with two people in a room for 100 people. And I felt it was it was awkward. Of course, I was a bit more relaxed with it and a bit more conversational, but actually I didn't miss any of the material. And I was going to, what this basically means is actually you've got a more valuable session because you've got a two to one rather than a one to many. So, so don't get afraid of that. How should I end my webinar? Now, this is tricky. If you do a good job with your webinars, you will stimulate a lot of questions at the end. And I'm sure some of you have got some more questions as they come in. So if they come in, I'll try and answer them. If not, with the tech glitch, we can't see them here. So we're having to go into the other channel and get them. With the tech glitch, um, you will get a lot of questions. So when I finish webinars normally, I will have a ton of questions. And when the last question's done, I go and go in, go and gone, and say, look, we're going to wrap up now. If you um, if you want to know about, so this is, I'll give you my wrap up. So thank you for all your questions. Look, you've had a bit of a flavor of what we can teach you here and how we can help you grow your business, how we can help you attract more clients and convert more clients. There's all the free resources you can have. Just email us and we'll send those to you. But if you want to take it a step further, if you really want to accelerate these results, I want you to think about coming on our accelerator program. We'll do a call with you if you want, where you can find out more about it to see if it's right for you. And if it's right for you, you can onboard and we will help you implement this and other stuff to get you more clients. And we can put you on a 90 day sprint to get you clients in the 90 days, if that's what you want. But thanks for watching. You know where the email is. You know what, what to do with it. Uh, we'll see you on the next webcast. That would be an ending of mine, typically. So I would all, always leave a call to action, always. Even if you're not selling, you, you might have a join the community or sign up for our newsletter or subscribe. Absolutely, it's been proven. If you don't ask, you don't get. So you have to give a call to action. Um, and you can reiterate that call to action throughout your webinar, but obviously you build up to it at the end. And I'm not talking infomercial. We've got five places now. You know, if you don't order, if you don't book in now, it's all gone. It's not QVC. It's not shopping channel. So um, how should you end our webinar? Thank you for coming. You know the call to action. Go do it. See you on the other side. Real simple. How often should I pitch my offering? Now, I would love everybody watching this to say, do you know what? The accelerator is right for me and I want to be on it. I would absolutely love it. Um, but some people it won't be and some people it will be. Some people might go, I can do this myself. And some people go, do you know what? I, I, I need the experts to work with us. So what I would tend to do, and this will lead me to one of my other points, and I'm going to have to find some space on the board in a second, is... When you're telling your stories or your examples, which we're going to come to in a second, what you need to be doing is giving people um, examples of people who've taken the call to action. So um, in main point two, uh, three, uh, let's see where we can put it. We'll put it here. Main point three yeah you will have three sections and with the three sections on main point three 
one of them needs to be a story. And then you need to explain that story. So we're going to do those together. So I'll give you an example. On our accelerator program, somebody came on called Heather. Um, we have, we've had four Heathers on our accelerator program. Um, and she came on and she was looking at her offer in the market and it was a retainer offer for about $800 a month. So $800 retainer per month on the accelerator program. And when I spent the time with her as part of uh, the onboarding and coaching sessions, she said she wanted five more, uh, five more retained $800 a month clients. So what we did is we went through her value proposition, her message, all of those things and implemented it. And what she found is that her clients, her target audience were not that interested in an $800 a month um, program. And instead, she sold $100,000 of consultancy services to, I think, three or four clients. And so what happened is instead of getting um, effectively $3,200 a month, if that's my maths right, she actually got $100,000 over three months. So it totally changed the way she thought about her business. So why did that happen? Well, sometimes, and I'm just giving you the example, sometimes when we think about our own business, our own perceptions of the market cloud our, cloud what's really going on. We don't really see the need. We see our need for customers, and that messes with what we see in the market. And sometimes we don't understand the demand, and the demand changes. So we could be selling something from two years ago that actually isn't relevant anymore, or we could be selling something that is... Um, uh, too new that people don't understand it. So we went through that process and then all the content, the social media was, was shifted to speak to the needs of a different market or the market as it was rather than how we perceived it. And so what happened was the result. Heather got her clients, 100,000. She built her business. She's changed the way she does business. But more than that, she now knows how to feed her own business with sales and clients. And she can do that sustainably. She can do it because we've taught her how to do webinars from this session to uh, getting the attendees, to titling it, to attracting the people ready to buy, to find the most valuable pain points that will attract the right customers. She knows all of this. So now she can do it all for herself. She can turn the tap on and she can turn the tap off because she understands she's been through our accelerator process. So this is a main point one where you actually just a main point three where you just share the story. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can share this. So that's one way to do it where you can conclude with um, main point three, which is a story explain result. Now, some would say there's a different way, and I've done both, and both are quite effective. Uh, you could break this down and actually do a story per point and add uh, another subsection into here of um, uh, reinforcing your product. So you could go into main point three is actually the offer that you're going to put in. And every point has um, a story in itself. So you could have a diagnosis, the points and a story. You could have the practical strategies, the points and a story. And you could have an offer with the points, which are the story. And so then you lead to the, uh, the final bit, which is your wrap up, which is, look, if you, uh, you are serious about presenting webinars, if you are serious about this and this is a challenge for you, you want to overcome it, you want to feel more comfortable, this is the path you need to follow. And so you're switching to your call to action. Now, uh, I don't have time to go into everything today, but one of the key things you should be doing is making sure that throughout your webinar, you are making clear about what you do and who you do it for if you're trying to sell or I'm not saying you're going to sell at the end and you're going to put a screen up saying buy now 
But if you want a conversation with somebody afterwards that's relevant in terms of, I really want to know more about X, Y, or Z, you have to set the scene. Now, all the way through this, I, get, I kept our cameraman guessing there. Uh, he thought I was going to walk over there, and I didn't. Um, all the way through this, um, all the way through, and he didn't see that one coming either. Um, all the way through this, you'll note that I've been talking about our accelerator. That's not because I'm going to pitch you. That's because I want you to understand the product without pitching you. So as I'm talking through and the stories and examples I'm using, I'm referencing our accelerator program. Why? Because at the end, when I get to the end of the webinar, which is now my CTA, I need a bigger whiteboard, don't I really? I need a bigger whiteboard. My CTA is the final point. This is where I'm trying to get people to take action. So in this CTA, I'm going to say, look, if you want the accelerator, come and find out. Schedule a call. We'll walk you through it. See if there's a fit. And if we can help you get the clients that you want, we will, we will take on board you as an accelerator member. But if I try and explain the whole accelerator pitch proposition here, half my audience will check out. They'll just go. Why? Because it's like, oh, we're into the sales pitch. I've got to go. It's the adverts in the, between the TV program. So what I did all the way through this is I weaved my service through the examples, through the stories, through all of that stuff so that I could communicate a little bit about the flavor of the Accelerator program so that you would understand a little bit more. So when I get to the end, I don't have to go, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's, it could do this, it could do this, it could do this. Now, some people would say, you should just go for it. Yeah, uh, you know, schedule a call. We've got 10 places. Um, there's uh, $10,000 worth of value, but today you get it for $2,000. The reality is, they are effective, but you have to have one, you have to have a certain type of personality and you have, have to have a certain type of business model. Mine isn't that. And I'm guessing for the majority of yours, isn't that. So what we do is we weave it through the whole presentation, giving examples so that people get a picture that then you can go, look, if you want to know about it, I'm not going to pressure you into it. Here's the link or book on the Calendly, no doubt, Graham. We'll drop his calendar in uh, so you can if you're interested. But you drop it in. And so then you end up in a position where you've presented and you've pitched, but you've not hard pitched. And then what I would do is go to questions. So we'd literally move from, from that point to Q&A. So uh, do we have a couple more questions? I think we do. So we'll just bring those up. Um, I think I've answered this one. How often should I pitch my offering? You actually pitch it once, but you actually tell people about it through the stories all the way through. Um, do I need a high tech setup for it to be successful? There are a couple of prerequisites um, for a presentation that, that kind of make it um, critical. So the first thing is actually the audio is really important. Audio is probably more important than the video. So um, um, I would encourage you to make sure that your microphone works, you've got no echoes, and it's a clear presentation. Video, it's obviously good if it's high-quality video, but then you need really solid broadband, which leads to the other point of making sure you have a stable broadband connection. There's nothing worse than it going all pixelated as you go. You can't control it often because it's also down to the other person's broadband. But if you can do everything on your side to make it quality, that would work. Um, in terms of tech setup, we do ours and we have a broadcast software that you can buy. I don't think it's very expensive. It's about $20 a month, I think, for the basic plan. Um, and with that piece of software, we can push to LinkedIn, to YouTube, or wherever we want to do. But it also allows us to put the images and to do stuff like, I'm hoping our camera guy will do a little demo to do stuff like this. And this. And this. 
So um, it's a little bit more uh, techy, but actually it could just start with one camera, you looking down. I've done them with my laptop. The first time I actually did a webinar, I put pull-up banners behind me because we didn't have a, a studio like we have today. I had uh, an apple cart, so a wooden apple cart, put my laptop on it with a tripod on top of my laptop with a webcam so it was the right height and presented that way. And then I had a, a, a clicker to just present. And it was a group Google chat. So they could see me and I could set up. And then we just got a little bit more sophisticated as we got went. But the software we use, you could use on your computer and you could put all this nice presentation on the bottom. You can do all of that stuff. And it's called Restream. There are others like StreamYard. We use Restream. It's quite handy. We've used it for a long time. It's reliable. It works. You know, I'm sure there's more bells and whistles that you can use. Um, so, but yes, Restream we use and sound, video, all of that stuff, broadband are essential. Um, what qualities make a good story? I guess um, the story has to be relevant to your target audience. So whoever's watching. So it has to identify with their struggles. So, you know, in my scenario, some of you will have joined this because you might get nerves. Yeah. And you might be wondering how to overcome the nerves. You can only overcome the nerves with a structure and you can only overcome the nerves by doing it. So you would make the, um, the stories that you share relevant to the audience that's there. And there should always be a, this is what was going on, the bad stuff, the trouble, the problem. Uh, this is what we did. And this is the result that happened. So real simple, and I learned this from somebody else, I can't remember who it was, but a real simple way of doing it is um, if you ever want to explain something, there's a simple one is uh, concept, what are you going to explain, uh, the actions that it take, and the result it delivers. So in this scenario, um, I was talking about Heather, she was uh, uh, selling on uh, Retainer, um, it was, that's what her goals were, that's what she wanted to achieve. But when we actually went into it, this is all the concept. Then I talked about, okay, we went through the value proposition. We tested the messages. We repositioned the service. We implemented an action plan. And now she did the $100,000 worth of consultancy work, not the $3,200 a month of um, retained work. So I just pitched the story relevant to the audience um, so that it's, it has a relevance to them. Um, they can relate to the story. Um, the other thing that somebody's just asked is, what should I do with the webinar video once it's done? I would always record the webinar. So this is being recorded because some people will not show up. Some people won't come and you will want, they, you know, life gets in the way, they forget about it. Um, all sorts of stuff happens, but you can send it to people after the event. So I've said to people today, if you want the replay, you can email us, uh, emails on the screen. So send an email to hello at maverick.com and we'll send you the link to the replay. We'll send you this as well in a written out format. So you can, you can understand it as notes. You can get that copy because we've recorded it. But at the same time, we may publish, maybe not this one, but some, some webinars, we publish them onto our uh, platform for people to review later. Um, or we might share clips of this on social media. So somebody might cut me down a little bit. And if I've said something interesting or insightful, and hopefully I have, they'll cut it down and use it on social media. Um, we might send this to our customer base and say, we had really good feedback from this webinar. Hopefully you're going to like and follow on the company pages and wherever you're watching. <laughs> hint, hint. Um, but we might share it with other people more widely as a resource. So this webinar might not might just be a one thing for the one recipient, but actually you can repurpose it into social media content, into a training video, into something that you can share with your client base as a value add. There's lots of different ways you can share it. Just as an aside, by the way, when you finish your webinar, you'll always have questions. So stay, the questions actually are some of the best bits. 
So questions and answers are fantastic um, for two reasons. One, people can go, oh, I've got a question. I'm going to I'm just going to store it up and I'm going to wait till the end to listen to it. People will ask you their relevant situations and you get to interact with the people who've attended, whether that be through a chat like today or whether that's through um, a, a, you know, an open forum on, on Teams or Zoom. The questions are really good because you can't prepare for them, right? So this is why it's good. So those who are nervous will be like stressed. I want to know the questions. No. The reason why it's good that you don't know the questions is people see you thinking on your feet. And when they see you thinking on the feet, the true level of your expertise comes out. Now, of course, there will be tricky questions that will be hard to answer. And so you don't have to answer all the questions. But what you can do is say, right, you've, you, that's a big topic and I don't have time to go into all of that. Let me give you a, a simple answer. But if you really want to discuss it, drop me an email and we'll actually go through it. Or maybe if a lot of people are interested in that, drop me an email and I'll do a full uh, answer for it because it may it just it's too much uh, to get through it in one topic or to give that answer justice. But it really does allow you to showcase your product or your or your subject matter expertise because you are you are unplanned. You don't know what's coming next. So you're answering based off your expertise. And that's where you really shine because that's where people go. I was going to swear then, but I won't or curse. That's where people go. This person really knows their stuff. This person knows what they're talking about. So the question and answers are really good. And again, what should you do with your webinar afterwards? You could actually snip the Q&A and share that as an independent uh, section of content. So there's lots of things you can do with this webinar once it's done. Of course, your first one's not going to be the best one. Um, again, back to that post I shared, uh, I mentioned earlier. Your first podcast will be awful. Your first video will be awful. Your first blog will be awful. But actually what you do is by doing them, you get better and you get more comfortable. And the more comfortable you get, the more relaxed you get, and the more, the more other people see that you're relaxed doing this stuff. There is, um, I'm the kind of person who just says, you know what, we'll do it. And what will be, will be. Yeah. You may have to, whether you're presenting as a, as a formal presentation or whether you're presenting in, in like this. And, and I think you can see my personality, the way I am, I, I, is hopefully coming across. You just have to go, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You don't conquer your fear until you do it despite it. So if you can't, if, you, if you're feeling all of the apprehension, all of the nerves, yes, you are going to be. That's perfectly natural. Even when I come onto these webinars, I feel a little bit nervous. What happens if I forget this? What happens if I forget that? What happens if something goes wrong? But I can't let all of those feelings and thoughts overtake me. Yeah, I'm in charge and I have to do what I have to do. And I'm not going to be limited and you're not going to be limited by thoughts whizzing around in your head. So uh, if you want a copy of this, uh, we're going to sign off in a second. Unless there's any more questions, we're going to sign off. Um, opening intro, introduce yourself, set the expectation. Uh, diagnose the issue so that you start from a base point of people understanding the issue. Remember that quote, um, the um, General Motors uh, engineer. If you understand the problem well enough, you have 50% of the solution. So if you help people understand the issue well enough, they will put together answers in their mind, but they will give you the credit for the answers, the illumination of thought that you've given them because you help them do this bit better. Practical strategies that they can do. So three practical strategies that you can explain, and then you could share a story uh, and a call to action. The other option of the version is pretty much the same, but each point has a story, and maybe you'll do 
less on each topic, but each point would have a story. So you'd tell a story at diagnosis, you'd tell a story at practical steps, or maybe you'd build this out and go, actually, point one is simple slides, change things often, tone and pace, and have a story about those. So there's lots of different ways you can do it, but the simplest way is three points, a story for each, or three sections, a diagnosis section, a practical strategy section, and a story section with an offer. Real simple. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I know this has been tight on time, so um, uh, thank you for bearing with me on that. Um, if you've got questions, do, do send them in to us on email, hello at maverick.com. If you'd like a copy of this and the replay, do email us and we'll send that to you. And if, if you want to know how to implement this and accelerate your results from doing stuff like this, social selling, webinars, outreach, building your business, getting more clients, schedule a call, see if there's a fit. If there's a fit, we'll onboard you as a client. If there's no fit, we'll give you some advice and you can go and uh, implement, implement, implement. Thanks again for watching. And don't forget, next week, we're back with another session. So check that out and follow the company page or wherever you're watching, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks again and see you next time. Past year, Maverick has helped generate more than 15 million in new business. The biggest reason for this is our 90-day training and implementation platform we call the Accelerator Program, where we teach your team to sell on social media with an implement-as-you-go strategy. It's not a pre-recorded course, it's hands-on sales training that develops and grows with you, with 90 days of real action that generates business and long-term revenue. So who is it for? This program is for entrepreneurs, marketing and sales professionals who want to sell without ads, cold calling or pushy tactics. A better way of selling with real steps to take which speeds up your sales process without burning any bridges. These are just a few examples of results our members have achieved using the Accelerator. As you can see, the Accelerator isn't about quick wins, it's about building a better sales process. If you'd like to learn more, just book a call with the Maverick team and we'll show you how the Accelerator program can win you new business.